Hi, welcome to Fun Bus. Our bus all about having fun. Painting our berry mushroom school bus. Hi, we're Natalie and Chloe. We bought a 1990 Ford Power Stroke school bus. So we are turning into our tiny home. The weather is getting colder here in Vancouver. You mean rain Vancouver. So we're working hard to get the outside of the bus done. That means in this video, we paint. Back up a little. So today, we're going to sand the other side of the bus and remove all the decals and the roof, hopefully, if we have time. It's 3.30 now because we went to Car Free Day, um, which is a thing that happens in Vancouver once a year, and then we spent all of our money. So, but now we must get to work. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> we sanded the whole bus with 220 grit sandpaper and that took ages and we also blow dried some of the decals off and we also angle grinded some of the decals off and today is our first day when we're going to start paint we've we've uh look, we've got paint. so we're going to use um direct to metal water-based water -based. because we really wanted to be able to choose fun colors and the oil-based ones have a lot more limited color selection it's not going to be as weatherproof it might start fading faster than something that is oil-based, but we are just gonna go with it because it, it is really important to us that we get to choose our color. Now what we're doing is we are rinsing small sections at a time with acetone just to like get all of the nasty yellow paint residue off from sanding. We power washed before this. There was still paint residue on the bus. So we're gonna start with this side of the bus, paint this section green. We're just gonna go section by section. Yes, because we can't keep everything clean and do it all at once. That is the plan. All right, let's do it to them. We're still on the first color. <laughs> but, but today we will be getting to the second color. And hopefully the third. We've actually come earlier today. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to get things done faster. The side still needs a second coat of green. The back still needs a second coat of green, but the front and the side both Are have done. two coats of green. Yes, yeah, so they just need the secondary colors and yeah. the tertiary colors. Um, and we're gonna finish the green first and then move on to pink. The station of painters on a roof. Let's paint. Um, above this line, pink. 
and then this part down here is gonna be brown, but that's gonna be tomorrow. Yeah, and the doors are gonna be pink too. I bet we could paint it brown today. Look at my, look at my invisible watch. job for today. Here's a couple touch-ups. Natalie, look. Look at our bus. <sighs> so She's beautiful. Pretty cute. Almost done, last day of painting. So it's been twice now that when I'm time-lapsing, there's a very, very long pause in the time-lapse and it's because something terrible and atrocious has happened. Uh, the first time is because uh, the uh, pink paint was upended and half of it spilt onto the driveway <laughs> and we had to clean it up. And then the second time was because Natalie dropped her phone into a bucket of soapy <laughs> hot water. So now it's in rice for the next couple of days. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I just I figured I should share. I found it enjoyable and entertaining. I mean, it's bad, but it was... Um, maybe in retrospect it will be. Maybe when my phone's better, it'll be a little funny. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to Fungbus. Our bus all about having fun. We're drawing fungus on our Fungbus. So these are our reference images. <laughs> Mushrooms are kind of easy to draw because they're um, alive and alive things don't look perfect. Which is great because we're alive so we don't make things that look perfect. But they also don't have little sticks and twigs that are complicated with leaves. So they're also a lot easier to draw than something like a bush. Yeah, they're, just, they're just blobs really so we're going to draw them all along here. Um, and we want to do it now because this is the exciting part that we've been waiting for. And we're going to call our bus Fung Bus. Oh my god, Nellie, I'm going to do it. Ready? No, I don't have mixed up. I started already. All right, be very careful, okay? No pressure. Oh, wow! We did this. Yeah, not too bad. Are you kidding? It looks so good. Oh, there's still tape on the window there. Oh well. That looks so good, Natalie. I'm so happy with us.
Hi, it's been an age. You can tell because it is, it's now snowing outside. We finished painting our bus. Yeah, we did. We just kind of want to fill in some gaps, I think, that the video left. Like we used rollers, microfiber rollers. Many people use a spray gun, but then we would have had to buy one. And or rent one and learn how to use it. And, and we just thought, we thought at first because so many people use them that you had to use it to put it on a vehicle. But we found out that you actually don't have to. And when we'd use the roller, it left a bit of like a, a stipple kind of texture that we actually kind of liked. So we, we think it looks nice that way. And if you are gonna use a spray gun, you're gonna need to mask off all of the windows completely without leaving any gaps and all the door handles and everything. And instead we could just paint fine details around. And since we had so many different colors as well in so many different spots, it would be hard to block out and then airbrush and then block out something else and airbrush. Yeah, I think it was a good idea for us just to use the brushes and, and it doesn't, texture doesn't really bother me that much. I, I think it looks great the way it is. Mm -hmm, and if you too. look closely, you'll find like brush marks, stuff happening, whatever, but it doesn't really bother me at all. We knew really early on with this bus that it wasn't gonna be perfect and that's fine. We don't, it doesn't need to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Like our Bondo job, is a little bit bumpy Wacky. and you can see it through but our whole paint job is a little bit bumpy but i think it looks really good and we've got a lot of compliments on it i so. know i love it so much <laughs> just looking outside and seeing it like be pretty it makes me feel so excited to live in it just in case you also want to do direct to metal and you want to choose whatever color you want and you want to roll it on uh, we ended up using two to three coats everywhere except for where the paint was black then i think it was five plus yeah. coats so our hood was black and we painted it pink. A lot of coats for that. Brown paint that we painted the mushrooms on for, uh, that's actually Rust-Oleum or Canada's Rust-Oleum, which is Trem Clad, I think. And we just bought that in the brown that they had. It's like oil-based, really thick, really intense stuff, really stinky. It goes on in one coat. You could use two. I think we used two in some places, but mostly one. We asked the people like what they, rec <laughs> bless you, what they recommended as a heavier duty paint to protect the bottom. It's not like that kind that'll actually protect the bottom, but it'll hopefully protect a little more, bit more than our just thin little water-based stuff. And they said this stuff's good and you can put it on top of the water-based and it would stick just fine. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And it worked really well. And I think it's actually a very beautiful warm brown color that really completes the look of the, of the bus. We got, we still got more of it. We got all more of all of our colors of paint. So we got a gallon of each of the pink and the green because that's all it came in was gallons of direct metal. And we used, I don't know, just over half of each, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And then we got a quart of the brown and we still have, my goodness, so many animals going on. I think we still have a quarter of a can left. Yeah, we're, we're almost out of the brown. Yeah, so the brown is the one that we used the most because it applies so thick that you mm -hmm. it just really, it does not go a long way. Yeah. The, the water-based stuff, you can spread it really thin. If you're struggling with decals and you're struggling with the, the stick underneath the decals, so you like scrape it off with a heat gun or blow dryer and you peel off all the black and then underneath there's that like sticky goo, we found that if you dip a wire brush in acetone and scrub it, it'll come off really easily. Really easy. That's yeah. the easiest way to do it. Mm -hmm. No, it worked really well. So uh, I wish that we had known that before we spent so much time angle grinding all the stick off. And also something that I think that people should consider if it works with their color scheme is not taking off the reflective tape because that's really hard to take off. Even if you grind it off and even if you heat gun it off, we had so much trouble getting it off and even mm -hmm. acetone scr scratching it, it off. Like there's still bits that we just painted over bits. I guess all that's left to do is to give the final after videos. Maybe we're gonna, I'm gonna take them right now and it's gonna be rainy after and you'll see that we've installed some Max Air fans and we're starting on our rooftop deck, so. But don't look, that's don't, spoilers. Yeah, yeah, you gotta close your eyes on that part, okay? Only look at the paint job. That's the part you're allowed to see.
anyway, the paint job is probably the thing I've been most happy with in this build so far, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I was really proud, sorry, this is future. I was so proud of getting the Max Air fans in, so you'll see that next time, next video. We have to take out the ceiling panels and the insulation in the ceiling in order to do the Max Air fans. So I think the next video is gonna be sealing out Max Air fans in. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, please subscribe if you want to see more of our bus build.